Last week, the stock of VMware, one of my favorites, caught fire, surging from 147 to 162 in a single session. And while it's pulled back nine points since then, we need to address what's happening here. I like to call VMware one of the kings of the cloud because this cloud infrastructure and virtualization company has pioneered so much of the technology that makes data centers so useful. That's why it's been such a terrific performer. Over the last two and a half years, this stock has more than tripled. But this is also a complicated story because VMware is a publicly traded subsidiary of Dell, and Dell is planning to come public again via a very complicated transaction. A lot of people were worried that VMware would end up getting subsumed into Dell. Investors didn't want that because this is a turbocharged growth story that deserves to stand on its own. So when we found out that VMware could get to keep its pseudo independence, let's call it that, the stock roared higher, even if the company does have to help Dell pay for its transaction with a one time special dividend of $11 billion. All shareholders participate, though. Now that we don't need to worry about that Dell connection, you know what we're going to do? We're going to focus on the fabulous fundamentals. I'm just glad the stock has pulled back dramatically from its recent highs, down to more than 153 as of today. But don't take it from me. Let's check in with Sanjay Poonin. He's the VMware Chief Operating Officer. Get a better sense of where his company's headed. Mr. Poonin, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Sanjay. Yeah, Have a seat. Thank, thank you so much. much. All right, well, we're going to put this in context because there's too much talk about the arbitrage, which I'm actually not that interested in, and not enough talk about what you actually do. Computing is exploding from every corner of the world. It's inside, it's outside the office. There are challenges everywhere. We got security risks, need to scale and support. I keep thinking that VMware is the company that people that other companies are turning to to figure this out. Yeah, that's right. You know, first off, software is revolutionizing the world, right? You look at the automotive industry, Tesla, banks, hospitals, even agriculture. So in that world of software, my mom's a doctor, so if I were to use an analogy, we started off with the heart which is virtualization of the servers. That really pumps blood everywhere. Right. Uh, storage, maybe the lungs, the digestive systems, which store stuff, software-defined storage. Software-defined networking, the nervous system. And then the management and automation is your brain. All of those are what's inside a data center. When you could have the human body so connected that the heart, to the lungs, the nervous system, the head are all working together, you get significant benefits. You lower the cost, you reduce complexity, you make it more energy saving, and you make your data center look like a cloud. We call it a private cloud. Right. And then we bridge that into the public cloud, cover it with an end user computing. Well, you, well, let's you that's right. bridge that, say, into Amazon Web Services, which you have a special relationship with. Yeah, that's an example uh, of the way in which we can right. help companies bridge that journey. But it all starts with a software defined everything story for infrastructure compute storage, networking. That's the heart, the lungs, the nervous system, the head of the data center. Okay, uh, you've uh, traced a great uh, body uh, metaphor. What is the uh, metaphor of those who don't use VMware, the old way? I'd hate to say it's like having a transplant. Okay, we would like for all of it to be one unified right. system, but maybe the analogy doesn't completely fit there. But it could be we, much more expensive? It is a lot more expensive, and you have to cobble many of those components together. So let's just say you decide to use somebody else's software to find storage. Okay. It's sort of like having a, maybe a lung transplant with the heart. So we prefer for it to all be one body that's basically nicely stitched together, um, and we get the benefits of many of those integrated components. We call that the software-defined data center. We've been investing, but we're very early. Many of these newer components, like storage, are only 40, uh, 14,000 customers of vSAN, only 4,500 customers of NSX. So we're very early in the development oh, of those businesses. Well, let's pick a customer that everybody knows, Brooks Brothers. What do they need you for? They're retailer. Brooks Brothers is an awesome store. They are a networking customer. So come back to that nervous system. They've got 500 stores, obviously doing great things for suits for 200 years. I heard Abraham Lincoln had some of the, the Brooks Brothers suits. So you go way back to this, as they think about that 500 stores, they need a networking infrastructure that connects the data center to the branch and potentially to the cloud. We call that the virtual cloud network. And VMware has pioneered this notion with NSX of a software-defined network that allows them to be extremely agile it sits on top of hardware networking capabilities, but provides a lot more security, a lot more agility, and allows their stores to be very, very nimble. Uh, we think this is going to be applicable to every company that has a data center, a branch, and a cloud. Well, for instance, the British Army, I'm thinking obviously about, about England uh, playing, playing football, but British Army uses you. Always, many of these, and this is why we've got a worldwide business. They're also a customer that's standardizing the data center. 
So many of these customers in many federal, commercial, mm -hmm. state and local, we've got a lot of these types of customers that are doing it. And these are both big customers and smaller customers, 500,000 customers. But we're very early in many of these customers using our newer products like NSX, I described, 4,500 customers there, 14,000 customers of stores. So we think we've got a long runway. Okay, if it's early, how are you able to get the talent you need? Obviously, this is a specialized business. You've got to, I am sure, be uh, top of your game. And yet, top of your game, how do we know they don't go to Facebook? They don't go to uh, Alphabet. Silicon Valley is definitely a competitive place for job talent. Now, we are an enterprise software company. I think one of the best uh, Fortune rated us one of the best companies to work for. So in enterprise talent, we can certainly get our pick. We're also investing in other locations uh, outside the Silicon Valley, like Atlanta. We've mm -hmm. got good locations in Bangalore and Beijing. But I think it starts with the culture. We want to build a great company, which is the best enterprise software infrastructure company, but we have to work really hard every day, Jim, to recruit and retain talent. Well, people understand that you do get a special shareholders, get that dividend from Dell, but they, is that, I mean, it is a complicated story. Listen, we focus on what we're good at, which is our customers. Even while all of this sort of cloud of uncertainty existed the last several months in our stock, there was no cloud of uncertainty around our customers and what they wanted us to do. They wanted us to bridge the private cloud to the public cloud. And we told all our employees, from engineers to sales reps, focus on the customer, focus on the partners. And that's what we did the last several quarters. While this might have been a little bit of a distraction, and the outcome we actually think now is a good outcome for all shareholders. Got freestanding stock. It's going to represent the, the and future. And Michael Dell on your network said he's yes, proud sir. of VMware being an independent company. So oh. that's really good for all of us and our eco ecosystem, where Dell's been very helpful to us, as is Amazon, but also certain Dell competitors. Okay, one last question. You recently got a very good award. You were the World Affairs Council Leadership Award, and that's for recognition of being a, a top immigrant who's made an impact on the U.S. Immigration's a real hot topic in this country. I, I just want to hear from you what uh, the future of it and what it could mean and what we need out in the valley and in the country from immigrants. Thank you for that, um, um, Jim. I, I'll tell you, my story is unique in the sense that I came here as an 18-year-old with $50 in my pocket. And to think that I had the opportunity to go to Ivy League schools, Dartmouth, Harvard, and Stanford, I'm blessed. My mom brought me up to say, work hard and anything's possible. And I think that's what this country is capable of. I happen to live in the Silicon Valley. And, and my story is probably representative of many others, whether you're Indian or Chinese or European or African. This country is great when you can work hard and your, the dreams are possible. So I'm very grateful. My objective with that award is to really give my devoted life to making an impact in this country to other immigrants so they can also be inspired by that same story. Well, I'm going to leave it at that because I like that good positive note. We all need that. That's Sanjay Poonin. He's VMware Chief Operating Officer. You know VMW, VMware. It's a, dare I say, Kramer cloud pig. CCK. Everybody's back into the break. <laughs> Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.